Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm a global artist ambassador for Phoenix 360, and I'm blessed to be joined today by the acclaimed and award-winning dub poet, Yasus Afari. Yasus, blessings, respect. Great to see you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Same here, eh? John. Johnny. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, we share yeah. that in common, as we alluded to earlier. So yeah. it's really a pleasure. It's a kindred spirits uh, meeting in this space for a purpose. So I'm honored to be here. Likewise. Thank you, Asus. Hey, Asus, I would love to share and learn about your soul's calling and what has brought you to poetry and music and some of the gifts that you contribute uh, through your artistry. But first, may we tune in to some of your poetry performance that is taken from the Jamaica Poetry Festival, Festival for Poetry in Motion. Right, and so Jamaica Poetry Festival was held at the AC Marriott Hotel on the 14th of August this year. We had many other performers on it, and so we'll see an excerpt from my performance there, as well, if you may, from a performance of Poetry in Motion, which is held in Mandible annually for the past 20 years. Uh, congratulations on the 20th anniversary of Poetry in Motion. So everyone, let's tune in now to see some of the poetry performance from Yasus Anafari. Thank you. Now, this is a particular honor for me still, Daddy Hugh Rai, the legendary, iconic pioneer originator, influencer, godfather, teacher from Sturgraf, Charlie Chaplin, Brigadier Jerry, Josie Wheel, Shabarangs, have a salute and crown recently, ranking Joe, Grammy Award album with Toots and the Maytels, Lee Scratch Perry, Coxon, the whole works. This is the man who influenced hip hop, rap, reggae, Dance Hall, the original toaster, and inspire I, Yasso Safari, the dub poet. So it's an honor you, to present the first ever lifetime award of honor to the one and only Daddy Hugh Rye, the Thank godfather, you, sir. Thank you, sir. the Jamie. general. Let's touch it and bless it. We give you sure. later, because you'll do a little thing for you now. Yeah, bless. Blessed, bless. love, bless. and honor. Yeah. People. Four corners of the earth, we present to you the legendary teacher, originator, the godfather, Daddy Hugh Roy. Enough love, sir. Way for love. Instead of forcing and finding it, I will say, Why don't they get together and live in a one love and one identity? I will tell you. Rebel in the morning and a rebel in the evening, too. Now don't you be like I never wanna play with songs called a rebel, rebel, rebel. I'm a rebel. Yeah, you know. So rebel. Oh, you mean I'm trying to tell you? I'm a capture. And says a great adventure. So adventure. But you can hear when I say let they be love like I would tell you people. For real! Oh, on the hillside Nothing in this world they could never, never do Not living good Never, never, never Travel wide From Staten Island Bridge, from Blue Up High and Higher People, let me tell you, say, say, yo Yes, Sue's beautiful, man. It's so great to share you. some of your insight and also your vocal tone and the way you deliver your poetry. Um, so I really appreciate you and also you know, that spoken word, which is such a, a unique and also blessed art form that you are bringing to bear in, a, in a, a capacity for social change and recalibration. But before we go into learning more about that, could you please tell me your soul's calling for this purpose and for this art form and through poetry, how did it first come to you? Well, I like how you described that soul calling. You said I was born in deep rural St. Elizabeth, that is affectionate to call St. Best in Jamaica. Uh -huh. No electricity, no running water, no electrical appliances. Just a simple, humble mud hut 
I was born in a thunderstorm to the extent that up to this day, they don't even know the exact day on which I was born. But we grew up with a certain level of dignity and integrity, knowing that these commodities cannot be inherited, neither are they sold in supermarket. Mm. And so we were inspired to, to inculcate these attributes. And so when I was growing up, I had a fascination with the sun, especially, and, and, and especially with the moon and the stars at night, since we didn't have artificial lights. And so I was going to the St. Elizabeth Technical High School, and I was asked to write a poem for our own level project. And reflecting on those childhood memories and experiences, I wrote a poem entitled The Traveling Sun. Beautiful. I remember our English teacher, Mrs. Alga McDonald, said, this is a very good poem. You must continue writing. I see. And so I was a beneficiary at that point of positive reinforcement. And so I kind of made an intuitive and conscious decision to be a vessel and a conduit of positive reinforcement. And so after high school, I worked with Jamaica Telephone Company. I write some poems for the Jamaica Lines magazine. And then I was given a, a scholarship to the College of Art, Science and Technology. Really? And I was the vice president that was responsible for social and cultural activities on campus. And we did a fundraising event for the Commerce Department. I did a performance and the experience on stage, before the event, on stage and after, was such that I recognized it as a soul calling. And so I recognized that poetry would be that vessel, that instrument that lead me through life. And that is what is happening uh, uh, up to this day. But incidentally, while I was at primary school, a teacher by the name of Trevor Monty, he used to give us a poem to recite for the next week. I will always remember my own from the same day before the class is dismissed. Oftentimes, none of the other male students would have remembered it and they would have gotten flogging. At that time, they used to flog in schools. And so yeah. that sort of developed an intimate relationship with poetry from that time. And so when, when at college, we got that feeling and that vibration, which coincided to embracing the faith of Rastafari. I saw poetry as my means of realigning, resetting, recalibrating the mindset of our people. And interestingly, I studied a branch of engineering called industrial instrumentation. Mm. And the human being is an instrument. And our cultures and values and aspirations are our reference point that allow us to be recalibrated, to be realigned, and to be reset. And so it all come together um, like primal knowledge. Yeah. Oh, man, that's beautiful, Jesus. And I love to hear you know, you express your calling and these, you know, insightful ways, but you were really blessed to have a soul inspired teacher who recognized in you a gift and encouraged you to, and that's, that's truly what a, a real soul inspired teacher will do. I think a few, we've all had maybe one or two, or perhaps a coach that saw us and connected to us on a soul level. And those make dramatic, dramatic impacts on youth. And so this is why soul inspired education is a passion of my own. And you are doing that in so many profound ways, obviously have valued education to the extent in which now you also are influencing the educational institutions in Jamaica. Um, and your poetry is, in essence, a is is really a tool for social change, it can bring a connectedness among the people. Uh, and your voice is such a powerful one in order to do that. I'm so grateful to learn about it and also to share it. Now, let me ask this question. You, your poetry also dovetails into your musical expressions. And so you also are a seasoned musical artist having delivered uh, in the, most recently your ninth album. So that legacy of music and delivery, maybe you can give me some insight into the Spoon of Maroon album that is just recently dropped? Well, yes, because you see, John, you must recognize that every song, by definition, is a poem set to music. Yes. And my early influences came from not necessarily just the poets, but the singers and musicians as well. And so my sources of inspiration would be described as eclectic. And so that is epitomized in this my ninth studio album, Golden Spoon Maroon, mm -hmm. which is 
a salute to all the indigenous and first nations people of our planet earth which we think are the repository and the, and the custodians of that original covenant between heaven and the earth between the almighty and humanity and so that album really seeks to harmonize roots reggae music with dub and poetry as well and so it is it is formatted in a way to facilitate that and we have important profound uh, uh, guests on the album namely Barry Salmon who is described in Jamaica as the lovers rap king mm -hmm. and you know the lyrical gangster the hot stepper and the music is also there as well as a Ghanaian based uh, artist called Tona Hope as well as my very brilliant daughter Mick uh, and so I, I'm, I'm totally honored to have them on it. In terms of the musicians, we have the very best, Sly and Robbie, uh, Gitsy, IG, all kind of people. And in terms of producers, Blackbeard, uh, Senyakom, as well as Top Road Music, among others, the very best students. So art direction by Neville Garrick of Bob Marley fame, and Ron Stevens did the illustration. Uh, so it's all coming together, really very talented people to have a, an eclectic album that draws from different genres and sources, but at the same time, is genre defying, genre defining. Uh -huh. So we are setting a new paradigm. Oh man, that convergence of talented individuals and that spiritual braid uh, uh, woven to, to deliver you know, your message of a, a recalibration and also to have your own daughter performing, you know, at her at her tender age. How old is she? Well, she's no 10, but the, we recorded plain and simple uh, when she was eight. I see. And by the time it was released, she was nine, and the album now come um, after she's 10. And so it, it couldn't be more even significant because you see. Uh, we put the album together when she was was nine, and it's my ninth album. And so to have yes. Beres Haman and Aineka Moses is an honor, but in a very special way, it's an equal honor to have my daughter on it. Yes. Because you see, I inspire and empower my daughter, but make no have no doubt about it. She inspires me and empowers me as well. And so the album is intergenerational. And, 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 and we hope that it will impact our ethnicities, orientations, age group, uh, demographic and psychographics. Because our thing is one earth, one love, one humanity. And this album is dedicated to our humanity. Oh man, that's beautiful, Yasus. You know, I, I love the fact that the honoring of the First Nation peoples and to respect and give celebration to those harmonic vibrations between the natural world and the spiritual world and you know a connected related kinship among humanity i think it's so powerful and important and you know you mentioned your daughter's participation and you give her the same kind of respect that you offer to these other seasoned souls because you recognize also that even though she's your daughter and you're related by blood there she has a unique and distinctive vibration a soulful entity um that is that you also respect on that level and i think that that is a very powerful way to perceive the world one another and these natural themes so i, re I really do so appreciate what you're doing to create the social change and understanding of this brotherhood this kinship this brethren spirit uh and also the indigenous who have been so disenfranchised throughout the world to honor their contributions and the way that they experience the world and 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 weave it into a modern fabric so that we can read definitely it. Yeah? definitely and especially in this time and age because the future of humanity is crystal clear in a journey mm -hmm. collective extinction or collective survival right and in that direction we don't have the luxury of choice so we have to formulate a way so that we can live peacefully uh, and coexist peacefully of inhabitants of one planet Earth, of one origin, one shared history, one shared planet, one shared existence. And so our work really is designed 
to realize that noble aspiration. That's beautiful. Well, through some of your contributions, like your Poetry in Motion, the 20th anniversary uh, this year, and then also with your recent... The 20th uh, anniversary is actually February 26th okay. next year. Oh, this coming? Okay, fabulous, man. Well, we're going to look forward to us, you know... So you have enough time now to come visit Jamaica, John. I would like that very much. <laughs> it would be like my dozenth time there, man. It would be again... And you share a piece Perfect. of your, uh, your poetry with me the other day. Brilliant. It's, you, you are very modest with it. Thank you. But it's brilliant. Me. I can tell you that. Appreciate and it would be an honor to, to something... share a stage with you. Likewise, brother. I'm so it's an honor. And it's a seed that's in me right now that's coming to to flower. So I, I really appreciate you, you know, sharing that with me, man. And you know, I also am interested in the book that also that you've written. And you know, I'd like you to give me some insight about that, you know, about uh, the themes associated with also the First Nation peoples. Right. Just quickly, John, um, I, put, I put a proposal in the 90s to our then Minister of Education, Youth and Culture, trying to inculcate the teachings of Miss Lou and Marcus Mosaic in the schools. And so that led to the Culture Agency program in Jamaica, where we use the arts as a tool of, of, of edutainment and, and, and social empowerment. Uh, that led to the Jamaica Day celebration and to the government's policy document on culture in education and cultural entrepreneurship and cultural tourism. So I became one of the first culture agents of Jamaica. We're we going to the schools now, which by then had transitioned into the Caribbean Examination Council and had recognized Rastafari as an indigenous, social, religious, and cultural expression of the Caribbean. Most of the resource material were not written by people who were sensitive and respectful of Rastafari. Neither were the resource personnel available. And so I, I, I go into the schools and looked at the curriculum, the questions that would have been asked by the students and teachers, as well as the questions that would have been asked by people when I travel, and certain my own idea and perception of Rastafari. I wanted to Rastafari to be seen in, in, in the true light as the only holistic and authentic and indigenous response to the genocide and crucifixion of colonialism and slavery. Therefore, we are the, 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 the children of the resurrection, breeding new thoughts, new values, new hope into the temple of Jah, into the temple of the family of humanity. And so the book speaks to the, 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 the genesis and origins of Rastafari, mm -hmm. the early pioneers. Uh, Rastafari and Christianity, gender relationship and customs within Rastafari, uh, food and nutrition, language, the ancient future, and many other aspects are uh, critical to an understanding of this liberty, which is not a religion, uh -huh. not necessarily a, a, a way of life. It is an experiential liberty of spirituality recognizing that we share the same breath, the same universe. And so our ultimate alignment is not to nations, but to our fellow man and woman within the human family. Wow. Yeah. And so that's the spirit and an approach to the book, Overstanding Rastafari, Jamaica's Gift to the World, which is now being used by the University of West Indies, Oxford University, the penal justice system in the United Kingdom, as well as SACRE, Standing Advisory Council and Religious Education in the United Kingdom, and many other institutions and agencies and ministries and governments around the world. That's beautiful, Yasus, because you know what I mean? You've given the modern world the ability to have some blueprint in essence of, of this spiritual vibrations that come from this legacy of the First Nation people in Jamaica, the Marooners. You know, it's similar to my own experience, you know, from a Celtic perspective, that there was so much that was lost as far as the, uh, the information um, that was available through colonization that eliminated a lot of the, you know, sacred insights that otherwise you know, have been, you know, washed out. Was it challenging to, to reassemble or to align that information you were able to obtain in order to make a cohesive process in developing a story of more accurate uh, depiction of, of the indigenous 
character and also of, of what they of the plight that they had to endure. Right. Well, it it it, it was a joy. It was a challenge, and it took five years. Uh, so I took my time. I did some research. I did a lot of in search, and then there was a kind of intuitive, divine uh, ordinance right. that govern uh, the process. It's hard to, to take time to explain. Maybe that's for another time on occasion. Yeah. That was but, enough. So it, yeah. I, I get uh, it. I get though that divine, you know, impulse or, you know, divine energy that came into you assembling this content in order to make it cohesive, understandable, applicable, relatable. Uh, yes, and because it was so intriguing, the journey itself, and because it was for such a, an important and urgent uh, cause in terms of infusing that knowledge to not just our people, but to our humanity, and to recognize all the indigenous peoples who we consider as the custodians and covenant of, of, of that first love, that first mandate, that first command from the ancestors. And so it had a joy, it had a challenge, but it was, it was, it was worth the experience, it was fulfilling. We had a launch at the University of the West Indies on the 29th of March, 2007, which was one of the biggest, if not the biggest book launch ever held at the university, especially for a first time author. And it afforded us to journey into places like Australia, New Zealand, Japan, uh, Wales, Scotland, England, Gambia, uh, Barbados. It has opened many doors. And in a sense, that is interesting because the book is meant as a key to open the doors and windows of the ancient immortal future. Yes, brother. I love it. I mean, it's a holy grail to some extent in terms of this knowledge and wisdom. And also, you know what I mean? What you, in essence, could receive yourself in binding to some of the philosophy and the spiritual inclusion that is represented in this work. And also throughout your works, Yasus, and I wonder whether or not much of it has been inspired by having been born in the country and been associated to those natural rhythmic moons and rains and the natural elements all around you that became in essence you know uh the inspiration for a lot of your desire in bringing these fruits to bear yes certainly we don't have doubt and continues to be that way as well because we draw the inspiration from i would think that we we have you know we are the repository of, of all that have been before us. Mm -hmm. And so to tap into that at a cellular level is what the experience has been, but to tap into the experiences and aspirations and struggles of our people, past, present, and future. You know, so we were able to, 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 to be uh, an instrument in that poetic alchemy of the very best of what ancient traditions, with the very best of contemporary dictates, the very best of what science and technology and theology and history and, and archaeology and sociology and history has to offer, or our music and our cultural traditions as well, and to infuse those and to, and to filter those and to bring that into an art form that can make it palatable and, and, and digestible, that it can be assimilated by all our peoples without putting barriers and boundaries, um, be it along language, race, social, political, uh, cultural orientations. Uh, so it, 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 it's the impetus that inspire and inform our work. And so far, we have been blessed in the sense that whatever people we come in contact with, especially the First Nation peoples of our planet Earth, they have been so receptive. For example, in, in Ottawa, New Zealand, they said, I am the migrated albatross. And we're like, oh, my God. I love that. When I checked that out, it was a profound honor. Yes. And when I go to the, the American Indians, it's a similar love. When I go to the Celtic people in Europe, it's a similar love. When I go to, to the Aboriginal people. And so, you know, it said to remind me and reinforce that we are one people. We breathe one breath and we belong to one planet Earth. And so we want this message to be, to, to be there more. And our approach to education and socialization is not to compartmentalize, but to uniform in psychic and social 
centrality of oneness. Yes, brother. That is beautiful, man. And it does trans translate and and you know it extends in all these different places around the world because there is no really, you know, difference among us we in, in terms of our connection uh from a human perspective but all these different philosophies and ways of being you know can be honored as an aspect of our unique contribution and it, it has to do with uplifting i think and empowering others to recognize their own divine potential uh and through yes and, and, to, and to foster unity in diversity knowing that our different religious and social and political orientations are just like the loving hands of the almighty and neither god nor man want to do without a finger yes <laughs> no, give thanks to the difference so, in, uh and and also appreciate you know that diversity that color wheel uh yes. and just that amazing uh you know gift of how so variety wouldn't be there dull, is the world, would, you know? in John, wouldn't that be dull and dreary and boring if we were bilaterally and symmetrically the same? No question. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm so grateful that there's such a splash of, of so many different vibrations and colors and uh, individuals and, and in nature, it's so complex and there's so many varieties um and that we're and we're related to every aspect of it you know give thanks and and, and you want to know we learn through comparative analysis so if you look at life life is really about the juxtaposition of extremes and the increments between extremes are learning like, uh, uh, for learning and, and for balance and harmony yes brother and in those harmonics i mean I, i'm so grateful that you are the kind of instrument of powerful change that you are involved in. And, uh, and I appreciate our association and ways we might work together in the future. Tim, you tell me, and I love sharing also how your soul's calling initiated and also through some of your work, works as well. But tell me, how can people connect with you, Yasus? How can they access your gifts in that way? Do they go to your particular website? Right. Um, that's a good question, John. I did afford just to share. So what happened is that this is my ninth album uh -huh. from numerology that is significant. And from the time we are in and the love and effort we put into this album, Golden Spoon Maroon, and the plight of our First Nation and Indigenous peoples and the plight of all inhabitants of our planet Earth and our members of our human family, that makes this album important. Mm -hmm. So that is a starting point. We want people to own and support this movement and this album. So it is available on every single digital platform that you can think of. And it is through VP's VPAR music. It came out on the 25th, so it's still very fresh. Indeed. And for me personally, you can find me on Facebook as Yasa Safari, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube as Yasa Safari. You can check my website, yasasafari.com or yasasafarionline.com. And if you Google me, you'll find a ton load of stuff that, that, that you can draw from and that you can benefit from. And on the website, if you feel like getting in touch with us, you can go by our email or telephone number is there. We are pretty much accessible, especially if it's for serious business and for the purpose and for the shared humanity that we are committed to. And so, you know, as a starting point, we really, really, because this whole um, album is designed to reset, realign, recalibrate. The demise of the dance hall music in Jamaica, for example, the, the, the situation with reggae music, Jamaica seemed to abandon scam and dub and rock steady. This eclectic album seeks to reintroduce, for example, dub uh, roots reggae with that message, music of empowerment and upliftment and inspiration with the poetry, remembering that poetry is not just poetry, but the poetry of life. So we take charge of the entire spectrum of the creative and performing arts. And that is why poetry in motion, we not just present poetry, it's music, dance, and comedy, storytelling, fashion, and poetry, the entire spectrum of the, of the creative performing and cultural arts. And so we include everyone uh, from different age groups and different orientations. We, we, we give, uh, part of the proceeds to charity. Uh, we always do that. For example, Jamaica Poetry Festival in its uh, 12th annual stage in this year, 
we had two deaf interpreters to show love and respect to the disabled community. So that's we had a deaf yeah. poet on it. We had a dinner of which all the proceeds of the dinner went towards the deaf community. We had a deaf poet as well. We had an art exhibition and we had a creative arts workshop that was free to the public. And we had an event that showcased people like Monty Alexander, uh, George Elliott Clark, Marjorie Wiley, uh, Dr. Michael Abrahams, Professor Mervyn Morris, uh, Samaya Banton, Kai Faulkner, wow. uh, a nine-year-old called Jazzy J from Canada, uh, 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 Calvin Mitchell, certainly myself, as well as Ebony Payne. So it's an eclectic presentation of the entire spectrum of the performing arts. And it was a, a, a full house and, and it was inspirational and pouring, uplifting. People can't stop talking about it. And right. so that's the approach that we take both to, 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 to the album, to the poetry, to all we do, to our workshops, to our reasoning temple. Can we use reasoning as, a, as almost like you use a tuning fork to right. tune a musical instrument? We use reasoning as an instrument to tune the human mind, to reset, to realign, recalibrate to our higher self, to our spirituality, to our values, because uh, we are spiritual beings and we are spiritual uh, brethren and sisters. And so we use, always use any platform, all of our talents and abilities, our events, any interaction to do just that. Social centrality bringing us into oneness and harmony and balance. Ah, oh, that is beautiful, Yasus. I mean, you truly are linking your heart and mind to move mountains. So I so appreciate meeting with you today. You know, I want everyone to tune into the social media links that you're going to find below our interview today with Yasu Safare, uh, the eminent dub poet from Jamaica and everything that he's contributing out there in the world. Please follow and discover. And also, Yasus, I work with a lot of emerging artists. And, you know, I think that there is challenges in becoming established, but I wonder whether or not, because you've had this a long storied career um, that continues to churn out new work, you know, is there any words of encouragement that you might provide to them to, to be resilient and to continue the art through their own challenges? Just remember this, energy flows where attention goes. Mm -hmm. So keep your focus, even when the force start costs. So <laughs> kind of good to know yourself, who you are, the resources at your disposal, draw on those resources, find your center, operate from your center, operate from the cockpit, just like a pilot does in flying an aircraft. And so once you do that, you now you have access to your resources and you focus those in realizing your purpose, in actualizing your potential. And so just remember one thing, energy flows right. where attention goes and energy cannot be created and cannot be destroyed. So it is how you manage energy. Uh, you focus your energy and energy is the ability to do work. So once you can manage and focus your energy. That's the you happy. <laughs> beautiful, man. I love it, Yasus. Thank you so much. It's so great to connect with you, brother. I want everyone to tune into those social media links you find below for Yasus Afari and also look for his rise on the Phoenix 360 app. My brother. My brother. Honor. Thank you so much, man. Blessings. My honor is mine, my brother. Thanks for having me. Thanks for sharing your platform. Thanks for the opportunity. And we ask people to support the noble aspirations and the work that you are doing and, and, and to full joy this alchemy that is in evidence today on your platform. Honor, love, and prosperity. And as we say in our liberty, Rastafari, bless it and set it. <laughs> oh, beautiful, man. Thank you so much. Blessings and respect, Yasus. Peace and be well. Anna. Tell them that plain and simple. You could.
smile till you smile for your dimple. Oh no, now go for your lean for me temple. Make me tell you that being and simple. Oh no, now go for your lean for me temple. Make me tell you that being and simple. People do us come with long nigger. Searching for the strong and feeble. But the humility and no simplicity. And we people now go take no more brutality. The Almighty guide and protect we. So make we lead out the redemption army. On down Babylon this 21st century. With them hypocrisy and them idolatry. Contaminating for we humanity. Oh, you can't violate for me temper. Make me tell you that plain and simple. Oh, no, now go violate for me temper. Make me tell you that plain and simple. You could have screwed till you're blue and wrinkle. Or smile till you smile for your dimple. Oh, no, now go violate for me temper. Make me tell you that plain and simple. Oh, no, now go violate for me temper. Make me tell you that plain and simple. Them turn the whole world so blinking twisted. Polluted, corrupted, and skits so freaky. But start defending international morality. Come up to rush them and gang them and conquer them. Conquering lions, so you know we got sin. Season and spice in the idol pen. Rise and shine again and again, Mama Africa. Right here and now, don't ask me where. Simple. Oh. You're not going to violate my temple, plain and simple.